if a patient has maybe like a physical condition or they had some trauma, right? And they haven't seen themselves like since like the ICU all throughout acute care, you don't want to accidentally prematurely and just throw a mirror in front of them when they're not ready for it, right? They can have serious trauma. Basically what I'm saying is like what they, they're like a burn victim or something, right? And it can cause a lot of trauma. It causes like flashbacks and they may not be ready for it. So think about their history and their condition, especially in acute cases. And if you think that putting a mirror in front of them may be a trigger, at the very least, if you're thinking about doing it, warn the patient, like, hey, would it be okay if I put a mirror in front of you if you think they may be kind of triggered by it, so to speak. When working with clients on balance, there is a really cool trick that I've seen therapists use, and that's using visual input, visual feedback, right? And we all know as therapists that balance isn't solely just within, right? Like our vestibular system, proprioception, in our body senses and how it makes contact with our environment. If you didn't know, that is two of the factors or three of the fact two of the factors, but a third one is visual input, right? So as our clients mostly do have often their visual like abilities, some may not, of course, right? Like with low vision or blindness. One advantage to having something like a mirror is that clients can to have direct feedback, instant like feedback when working on their sitting balance. All the while, you know, you as a therapist, you can be providing physical cues or just physical support, such as in bed, if they're a little bit just unbalanced, right? And they have their poor midline orientation. So if your therapy gym or facility basically has one of those mirrors that you can roll around, that I've seen those been used. So if you have those, definitely an underutilized piece of equipment for helping clients do their balance and their rehab. So I guess that is another good point in safety, right? So I've seen mirrors, like tall mirrors, especially been like nearly knocked over, one even been knocked over. So because they're really tall, right? And there's like not a, oftentimes they are pretty heavy, but I don't think there's like the way that they're designed. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of like lower mass towards the ground to keep it kind of stable. So they can be tipped and knocked over. So if you're using this in like a very dynamic environment, let's say like in the middle of the therapy gym where you have other patients moving around, other like you know, family members or even like staff who are in a hurry and just not paying attention. Maybe like they're on their phone or they're like looking at an order or like on their clipboard or something. They cannot get over and it's glass, right? And so that's not a good thing. So if you have a non-glass version, then that would be definitely safer. How would you actually use this with the client, right? So of course you would line it up with the client so that ideally they can see their whole like body length. So a body length mirror is better than a smaller, like maybe midsize or even like a hand mirror. You want the patient basically to be midline, right? And not deviate from it. So the cool thing about having a mirror in the first place is they can see themselves go off center and away from the mirror. So then they can use this visual feedback to correct themselves because oftentimes without the mirror patients, the environment is so big and we kind of get so used to it and accustomed to it. And we compensate a lot with our brain and how we take in our senses so that we can actually function, right? Otherwise, you know, even though we struggle, our body ultimately tries to find a way to compensate. We can be compensating and thinking we're compensating enough, but all the while as an observer, you know, you seeing the patient, they're just not maintaining their midline balance. So they may think that midline is like this or in extreme cases, they're unable to even sustain a sitting balance and they may be completely just a dependent when it comes to sitting balance. So having something this, like this can be really, really helpful. Another tip for you therapists out there is you can use a dry erase marker and you can even make it even more precise by marking just down the middle of the mirror to kind of like splice the body in half, like symmetrically. So that can provide another cue or you can just do like a circle, whatever you're going to experiment with for the patient to maintain and kind of focus on because having a mirror without it can be useful first of all, but if you want it to be even kind of like a more like a game or have a patient be challenged more or just to provide an additional cue to them adds more preciseness. It's more sensitive 
and allowing patient to kind of notice that they actually slowly starting to go off. What I like to do in occupational therapy is once they kind of like master this is add more fun into the mix, right? So you can make it functional or you can incorporate activities. So one thing you can do is maybe have them like brush their teeth, right? So if they're sitting fine and doing static sitting, one thing you can do is add dynamic sitting balance, right? So brushing their teeth. That may seem simple, right? You're just sitting there and like, you know, brushing your teeth. It's like very fine motor movements, but you'd be surprised how even challenging the brain, like when people do different tasks and add tasks on top of that, it can really challenge the brain, wake up more areas and the brain has to kind of sustain that sitting balance, right? So more areas of the brain are working, they have to work harder. And that's really more in like in the real world, like in the real world, no one's going to just like sit there and stare at a mirror. Like, for like most of the time they're going to be doing something like functional or therapeutic or i mean i guess they can be relaxing but that's kind of like grading it up and taking it to the next level imagine you guys can probably think of like a million other examples right like drinking up a cup of water right so maybe even doesn't even have to be like motor involved in terms of that before that you can even add cognitive tasks so dual tasking right you can have the patient maybe count backwards from 10 from 100 and then maybe make it more complex by twos and by sevens like oh my gosh sevens if i was a patient and somebody asked me to count backwards by seven even right now at baseline i wouldn't be able to do it so <laughs> i'm just i would just basically tell the therapist flat out like hey i'm gonna fail that mocha i'm gonna fail that <laughs> reverse um serial subtraction by seven how you can make it a little bit more fun right you can make, incorporate games right and challenge them while having that mirror there you can once they've kind of mastered that you can maybe do like reaching activities right that's a pretty classic one with you the therapist you can have them reach or if there's a family member like observing i love to have to get them involved in having doing something while i can kind of observe and just notice more for my own observation right so ultimately you don't want to have the mirror there all the time right i mean it is a form of compensation but you kind of want to work towards removing the mirror, right? The patient's not going to always have a mirror in front of them when they're sitting all the time. So the way to kind of challenge the patient after you incorporate more activities, such as with dual tasking or more functional activities like ADLs, maybe even like dressing, that'd be a good one. I just thought of like taking off a shirt and, the, the, you know, obfuscating their view briefly. Like that's a pretty common time where patients lose their balance. So. Hope this helps. My name is Jeff. I'm the OT dude. If you haven't seen my content, subscribe, like, and all that good stuff. I'm terrible at doing this, but thank you guys so much for your continued support. And I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments, have you guys used a mirror before and has it helped?